that if the president were to be reelected, he he would still be unable to work with members of Congress. He's ignored them. He's attacked them. He's blamed them. And of course, the debt ceiling, it's going to come up again. And then there'd be a threat of shutdown or, or default. And that, of course, chills the economy, puts more people out of work. The president was right when he said he can't change Washington for the inside. Wow, that prophetic warning was issued back in 2012 by then-presidential candidate Mitt Romney. And now less than one year later, surprise, surprise, Obama won't negotiate. The government shut down. Our tax and spend president is about to call on our Congress to once again raise the debt ceiling. Here for an exclusive interview to explain why he sounded the alarm about the dangers of Obama's second term. The man himself, former Massachusetts governor, presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Governor, how are you? It's been, I have not interviewed you since uh, the election. Um, welcome back. Thanks, Sean. Good to be with you again. How are you and your family doing? I'm sure that's not an easy thing to go through. You go, you spend a, two years of your life out on the campaign trail. You, you're that close. How hard is it? Well, Sean, it's, it's nice to get back to, uh, to real living and normal life. Yeah. Uh, but I can also tell you that running for president is a fabulous experience. The people you meet, the character of the country you come to know in a, in a very fundamental way is something I'll never forget. And by the way, if anyone that is watching gets a chance to run for president, do it. It's a great experience. Are you encouraging me to run, Governor? Because I don't think I'm Ab going to run. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, Sean. Anyone who gets the chance ought to do it. I might get two. I might get three votes, maybe four, if I was lucky. Um, well, let me ask, you know, everything you said there now come in the pass. I mean, do you, well, is there any party that wants to say I told you so? Well, look, I, I don't want to look backward, of course. What we want to do is find the best way to get this country working again and putting more people to work. And uh, my concern was that the president in his first term uh, pushed through things on a partisan basis, was unable to work across the aisle, and then spent uh, the, the last two years of his first term attacking Republicans in Congress and showing an unwillingness to reach across the aisle. And, and frankly, you can't get things done in a bipartisan uh, nature where you have three branches of government unless all three branches are willing to work with each other. And this president has not shown that inclination frankly, since he's been in office, and the country's in the balance. I mean, a, uh, the government shutdown, a, a debt limit uh, uh, issue, the, these are real concerns that will affect a lot of people, and the president has got to engage and work in the job of governing, uh, not just campaigning and posturing, but governing and, and working with people uh, that agree with him and that disagree with him. What do you think of the president's decision, no negotiation? on either the debt ceiling or the government shutdown. None. Zero. What do you think of that? Well, I, I, I don't think the American people uh, can understand uh, how the person who is to lead the country would possibly take a position saying, I'm not willing to talk, I'm not willing to look for common ground. I, that, that's just not realistic. Look, th this is not the first time that the country has had a government shutdown. During the Reagan years, government shut down eight different times under a Democrat Congress. The president and Congress worked together and got things straightened out. Under the Carter years, again, a Democrat Congress, the government shut down five times. Look, look, this is not the first time this has happened, but what seems unusual here is you don't have a, a president who's willing to engage and willing to work with the other uh, people across the aisle as opposed to making, if you will, pretty bold statements to the public and campaigning for his posture. And, and right now, I think the American people don't care so much about who's right. They just want to get this behind him and get this economy going again. The president actually suggested that raising the debt ceiling does not necessarily increase our debt. Uh, I was not a math major, but every time we raised the debt ceiling, we ended up spending that money and increasing our debt. I can't think of a time that it worked the other way. Um, do we have to stop borrowing this kind of money? Well, what we have to do is begin to work to rein in the long-term crisis that we can see in the, in the headlights ahead, which is what occurs when the entitlements that we have and the aging population encounter uh, the, the spending limits, which, which, of course, have to exist. And at some point, you've got to say, look, we've got to rein in our spending. We've got to put in place a, a series of reforms that assure that America's future will be prosperous. And, and that's what Republicans are asking the president to do with this debt limit uh, discussion, which is, look, can't, can't we agree to make some progress, some modest progress, near term, long term, 
to, to address this growing debt crisis and to make sure that we don't have the kind of cataclysmic uh, outcome that, occur, that could occur if we were never to take any action at all. Governor, uh, you've, you've had a considerable amount of time, almost a year now, to reflect on, on the campaign and the election. Um, would, would you run again, number one, and number two, as you reflect on the campaign, anything you change, anything you do differently, or would it be about the same? Well, look, uh, I'm not running again. <laughs> We've got some very good people who will be running for office in 2016, and I'll be uh, uh, supporting our nominee. Uh, that, that isn't because I didn't enjoy the process. Look, I loved running for president. It was a fabulous experience. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you how wonderful it was. It was just great. But did I learn from the process, and are the things I do differently? Of course. I made a number of mistakes personally and things that I said. I wish I could fix those uh, and go back and, and relive history, but that's not going to happen. But I think also, particularly with regards to the Hispanic voters, we just didn't make as effective an outreach as we needed to, to make sure that Hispanic voters understood that my campaign and our party is devoted to helping them have a bright and prosperous future by building a strong economy with more jobs and rising incomes. Yeah. People come to this country from all over the world because it's the land of opportunity, and that is slipping away under this president. And I did not make that message clear as I should have during my campaign. After four separate proposals by the House to defund, delay, eliminate exemptions, and then just conference, do you think they're doing the right thing by holding the line at this point when the president won't talk? Look, I'm, I'm with the Republicans that want to make sure we finally address the spending crisis that's ahead and that we see all around us. We've got to get this country going again. I want to see America succeed. It means Republicans and Democrats and the president have got to sit down and discuss the future and make progress. That's what the American people want. Governor, uh, I think we'd be better off if you were elected, a lot better off. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Good to see you again. All my best to your family. Thanks, Sean. Good to be with you.